This is your Cosmic Briefing, a short clip from the Urantia Book for Dummies. Please stand by. Here in paper 160, we can read, Human life consists of three great drives, urges, desires, and lures. Strong character, commanding personality, is only acquired by converting the natural urge of life into the social art of living, by transforming present desires into those higher longings which are capable of lasting attainment. While the commonplace lure of existence must be transferred from one's conventional and established ideas to the higher realms of unexplored ideas and undiscovered ideals. The more complex civilization becomes, the more difficult will become the art of living. The more rapid the changes in social usage, the more complicated will become the task of character development. It tells us, every ten generations mankind must learn anew the art of living if progress is to continue. And here's where it gets interesting. And if man becomes so ingenious that he more rapidly adds to the complexities of society, <laughs> like now, the art of living will need to be remastered in less time, perhaps every single generation. If the evolution of the art of living fails to keep pace with the technique of existence, humanity will quickly revert to the simple urge of living, the attainment of satisfaction of present desires. Thus will humanity remain immature. Society will fail in growing up to full maturity. And that is where we are right now in an immature state of development known as the interregnum. And so we can see that your mind energy system is your center of gravity. And it is all about mind. From this mind energy system emerges our worldview, our balancing mechanism. And that's what we bring as citizens to the civilization. Paper 196 says, Man's greatest adventure in the flesh consists in a well-balanced and sane effort to advance the borders of self-consciousness, to understand ourselves better. Out through the dim realities of the embryonic soul consciousness, to a wholehearted effort to reach the borderland of spirit consciousness. To understand this better, we need to investigate what the word reality means and how it applies to our tight rope walker through the storms of life and our human adventure. In paper 196, it tells us that there are just three elements in universe reality. Fact, idea, and relation. Goes on, it says, we are in the habit of designating these realities as thing, meaning, and value. Everything you know is contained in one of these three elements of universe reality, thing, meaning, and values. And the Urantia book tells us that this is just the very beginning of an understanding of reality, that there are ever ascending levels of reality. And it makes very clear that there are limits to our understanding of these higher levels. However, we will accelerate this topic many, many times throughout this series. Our intuitive sense in the mind arena of living tells us that we have come to understand this triad of reality, this thing, meaning, and value, as fact, idea, and ideal. The Urantia book tells us, only the comprehension of facts and the wise manipulation within the laws of nature will enable man to get what he wants and to avoid what he does not want. Scientific knowledge leading to scientific action is the only antidote for so-called accidental ills. The expansion of material knowledge permits a greater intellectual appreciation of the meanings of ideas and the values 
of ideals. A human being can find truth in his inner experience, but he needs a clear knowledge of facts to apply his personal discovery of truth to the ruthlessly practical demands of everyday life. So from our discoveries, and as we ascend to another level, we see that fact, idea, ideals, leads to the understanding of matter, mind, and a word that the Urantia book tells us isn't a very good word, but they use it anyway, spirit. Usually that means kind of ghosty things. But the Urantia book explains in full detail the whole physics of spirit and how important it is that we understand this. In paper 118, it reads, In the beginning on an evolutionary world, the natural occurrences of the material order and the personal desires of human beings often appear to be antagonistic. Much that takes place on an evolving world is rather hard for mortal man to understand. Natural law is so often apparently cruel, heartless, and indifferent to all that is true, beautiful, and good in human comprehension. But as humanity progresses in planetary development, we observe that this viewpoint is modified by the following factors. Humanity's augmenting vision as we grow and mature. His increasing understanding of the world in which he lives. His enlarging capacity for the comprehension of the material facts of time, the meaningful ideas of thought, and the valuable ideals of spiritual insight. As long as men measure only by the yardstick of things of a physical nature, they can never hope to find unity in time and space. In the last 300 years, we have tried to build a civilization without a genuine understanding of the spiritual dimension. And it has failed. We have thrown the living spiritual baby out with the proverbial dogmatic and doctrinal bathwater and it is dying. In paper 103, it reads, When man approaches the study and examination of his universe from the outside, he brings into being the various physical sciences. When he approaches the research of himself and the universe from the inside, he gives origin to theology and metaphysics. The later art of philosophy develops in an effort to harmonize the many discrepancies which are destined at first to appear between the findings and the teachings of these two diametrically opposed avenues of approaching the universe of things and beings. Continuing in paper 103, the spiritual viewpoint is the awareness of the insideness of human experience. Man's spiritual nature affords him the opportunity of turning the universe outside in. It is therefore true that, viewed exclusively from the insideness of personality experience, all creation appears to be spiritual in nature. And we see this in so many of the philosophies. However, when man analytically inspects the universe through the material elements of his physical senses and associated mind perception, as we do now, the cosmos appears to be mechanical and energy material, matter. Such a technique of studying reality consists in turning the universe inside out. Okay. A logical and consistent philosophical concept of the universe cannot be built upon the postulates of either materialism or spiritism. For both of these systems of thinking, when universally applied, are compelled to view the cosmos in distortion. The former, contacting with the universe turned inside out, the latter, realizing the nature of the universe turned outside in. Never then can either science or religion, in and of themselves, standing alone, 
hope to gain an adequate understanding of universal truths and relationships without the guidance of human philosophy and the illumination of divine revelation. Always must man's inner spirit depend for its expression and self-realization upon the mechanism and the technique of the mind. Likewise, must man's outer experience of material reality be predicated on the mind consciousness of the experiencing personality. Therefore are the spiritual and the material, the inner and the outer, human experiences always correlated with the mind function and conditioned as to their conscious realization by the mind activity. Mind is a bridge between things and values, between matter and spirit. Man experiences matter in his mind. He experiences spiritual reality in the soul but becomes conscious of this experience in his mind. The intellect is a harmonizer, an ever-present conditioner and qualifier of the sum total of mortal experience. Both energy things and spirit values are colored by their interpretation through the mind media of consciousness. So how do we do all that? Paper 196 tells us, the great challenge to modern man is to achieve a better communication with the divine spirit that dwells within the human mind. Providence becomes increasingly discernible as men and women reach upward from the material to the spiritual. The attainment of completed spiritual insight enables the ascending personality to detect harmony in what was theretofore chaos. There is operative throughout all time and space in regard to all reality of whatever nature an inexorable and impersonal law which is equivalent to the function of a cosmic providence. What man calls providence is all too often the product of his own imagination, the fortuitous juxtaposition of the circumstances of chance. There is, however, a real and emerging providence in the finite realm of universe existence, a true and actualizing correlation of the energies of space, the motions of time, the thoughts of intellect, the ideals of character, the desires of spiritual natures, and the purposive volitional acts of evolving personalities us. There is a providence in the evolving universes, and it can be discovered by creatures like you and I to just the extent that we have attained capacity to perceive the purpose of the evolving universe. We are incomplete beings moving towards completion and wholeness on our tightrope of this human adventure in the whole of the cosmos. When men pray for providential intervention in the circumstances of life, many times the answer to their prayer is their own changed attitudes toward life. But providence is not whimsical, neither is it fantastic nor magical. It is the slow and sure emergence of the mighty sovereign of the finite universes. We have often heard people say, I will believe it when I see it. But with the spiritual law, you will see it when you believe it. An effective philosophy of living is formed by a combination of cosmic insight and the total of one's emotional reactions to the social and economic environment. Remember, while inherited urges cannot be fundamentally modified, emotional responses to such urges can be changed. Therefore, the moral nature can be modified. Character can be improved. In the strong character, emotional responses are integrated and coordinated. And thus is produced a unified personality. What we learn is that self-esteem comes from self-respect. 
Self-respect comes from choosing this developing character, from choosing the path of character development, the moral path, the right and proper way to do a thing in the face of every alternative. Paper 71 says, a moral society should aim to preserve the self-respect of its citizenry and afford every normal individual adequate opportunity for self-realization. Such a plan of social achievement would yield a cultural society of the highest order. There is no doubt whatsoever that this is a fateful moment in history. Wherever we look, politically, religiously, economically, environmentally, there is insecurity and instability. It's not too much to say that the future of the West and the unique form of freedom it has pioneered for the past four centuries is altogether at risk. This has been a Cosmic Briefing, a short clip from the Urantia Book for Dummies. Please click the subscribe button above and then follow these links for a full presentation of this briefing. Thank you.